welcome to another edition of Senior Connections, the show that is about the Senior Activity Center of Sheboygan. My name is Wendy Schmitz. I am the supervisor of the center. And today, we're going to have a follow-up session on our last program, which was about our recent trips to Cuba. Today, my guests are Anne Grittinger and Maria Westra. Anne went on the September trip and Maria uh, came with me and my husband um, on the October trip. So Anne, could you introduce yourself a little bit, please? Certainly. Um, I'm Anne Grittinger, and um, I actually live outside of Oostburg. It was um, our first experience going to Cuba, although we've traveled other places and love to travel now that we're retired. And you went with? I went with my husband and with uh, 11 other people. From, or 10 other people from the Sheboygan area. And Maria? I'm Maria Wester, and I always, I like to travel, and when the Cuba trip came up, it was like, what better place to go with a group of people? So I asked my friend Anne to go along, and didn't take her too much convincing. <laughs> <laughs> and Anne, what is it about Cuba? We asked Margaret this in our last show. What was mm -hmm. it about that particular trip that intrigued you? Well, I thought it was interesting to um, find out more about the culture. Um, I'm very interested in the arts, do a lot of volunteering with the Arts Center, and so the opportunity to see the art and the architecture, the music, were all very interesting to us. And your husband had a specific reason for wanting to go. Do you mind briefly touching on that? <laughs> well, he wanted to go. He wanted to see, he was hoping to see um, some of the more of the bi biology of the area. He wanted to see the crocodiles. He wanted to see some of those things. Unfortunately, they was pointed out that it's three miles down the road that way. <laughs> um, but we didn't go that way. But there were still lots of things for him to see. And as a painter? And he, as a painter, yes. He's doing a whole series of lighthouses right now, so he was interested in taking pictures of lighthouses and, and uh, some of the water scenes there. Very nice. Um, in our last show, um, Rita was the uh, interviewer, and she asked Margaret and I um, basically about our general impressions of Cuba. Um, and of course, the reason we explained that the reason why we were able to go is because now the embargo has been lifted somewhat and we're able to do a cultural exchange uh, from America to uh, meet the people of Cuba. So what I thought today would be fun would be to continue the conversation and um, talk about some of the people um, who we were able to meet. We started our trip in Havana and um, I believe um, that our schedules were probably different, mm -hmm. um, but Maria and I, our very first um, trip outside Havana was to um, the children's performance at the Arts Center in Santa Clara. Right, Mar Maria? Well, it doesn't really matter what the timing was. Um, how would you describe the experience of the uh, of meeting the children and what were they doing for us oh my gosh they were just so exuberant so exciting to see us when they greeted us and they handed us their flower their national flower which is the jasmine i believe and oh. they were just really to go pick and to see them perform there was a group of 60 children at this school they are into the music the dance um, and the arts, I believe they're painting. Um, wow, they're just outstanding. They're just like little grown up people performing their national story through dance and music. And um, uh, one of the things about the trip that I enjoyed was that we got to participate. <laughs> um, it was a little bit That's like right. getting Lutherans to participate. Um, I don't think that we're quite as exuberant as, as you described them to be. Um, I know it took a little while for us to warm up in some cases, but we did get to dance with the children, Always. and it was hard to resist. Um, Anne, did you get that same opportunity? Yes, we did. Um, the children came out to the audience yes. and took us by the hand and led us on. The production that we saw was Romeo and Juliet go to Cuba. Oh, oh really? 
<laughs> and they said, we won't be, it'll take too long if we, we translate along the way, but we think yeah. you'll get the idea and you can ask questions at the end. So it was interesting. They started out with a, a farmer and his dispute with a crow and the children depicted that wonderfully. And then they went on to do the little Romeo and Juliet story, which we all knew. So, And then they pulled us out and uh, had a stance with them. Now, I know that for some of the people on our trip, it was the highlight of the trip was that particular performance, some people said. Um, what struck you the most about it, Anne? Um, the children's enthusiasm about the arts and the dancing and their singing and their openness with strangers coming into their school. And I know you had mentioned when you came back that um, what struck you was um, how they managed to um, uh, be very resourceful about their costumes. Do you remember about their shoes? Um, um, they, they, yes, they, um, in our, if we went to recital here in the States, all the children would have either the black or the pink or their little white slippers, and they had slipper socks and things like that, and it didn't matter. It was the performance that was the important thing mm -hmm. for them. Lovely. Yeah. They, they reminded us a lot of our granddaughters and, and uh, in the performance and the children, and they were eager to talk to us and tell us, oh, this one's my brother and this one's my cousin. And um, so it, it made it feel more like, fam like a family sort of gathering. Yeah. Um, one of the highlights that I've talked about for me personally was when we went to the Literacy Museum, um, which um, was actually uh, outside Havana. Um, Maria, can you talk a little bit about what the Literacy Museum was all about and who we met there? The Literacy Museum was, um, well, when Fidel Castro came into power in 1960, he wanted the Cubans all to be literate, have the ability to read. So he did a campaign to recruit um, anyone who wanted to go out and teach the people how to read. Um, and this was to the remotest areas up in the mountains. And some of these children that went out, um, they had to leave their homes for months at a time. They went up into the mountains um, to help the farmers learn to read. But part of this um, involved the children or whoever went um, to help the farmers with their chores. And then in the evening, after all their work was done, they would sit with lanterns and mull over, um, do all, teach them how to read and ex whatever had to be done. We didn't get to meet the people, uh, per se, who were part of that campaign, but there's a wonderful picture on the wall of an eight-year-old boy who left his family and, um, and, and went to live with a, a farming community. And um, I think what struck me is he's exactly the same age as me, <laughs> and now he's a veterinarian. And uh, just the idea of letting an eight-year-old boy leave your home and, and go off in this what must have sounded like some wild mission. Well, it was interesting because they showed us the video that you probably yeah, also saw about the whole campaign. And then at the end, the lady who was at that museum and said, and Freddie here, who was our bus driver, was one of the teachers. Oh, really? Yes. So it was really sort of fun to talk to Freddie about his experience as being a teacher, too. Yeah, one of the things that struck me was there was a lady on that video and she said that, uh, she said, it doesn't matter what I've done in the rest of my life. She said that mm -hmm. one year gave my life purpose. And I, I as an ex-teacher um, at some point in my life, I was so touched by that. I, and I know that the teachers in our group were, it was, uh, I, to me, mm -hmm. I could, my trip could have stopped right there. I, I felt like that was my reason for going to Cuba. <laughs> so um, that was another place we went to. Um, and then, um, Anne, I know that you told me about a time when you partic were particularly touched, and that was when we went to see the choir. Could you tell, that, tell us a little bit about the choir? Well, we went to the, see a choir perform. Um, it was a very, very hot day. 
but it didn't <laughs> matter. <laughs> we learned by that time, have your fan. <laughs> um, and this is a wonderful choir. They sing a cappella. They had just returned mm -hmm. from a tour of France where they'd sung all over the place. Um, no pitch pipe, it was all a cappella, no pitch pipe for tone. She had a tuning fork, which she would oh, yeah. touch at the point that she needed to tap it and then touch her cheek, her mandible, so that you get the vibration and the tone in her head. She'd do a little humming to give everybody their parts, hum the little first part to get them into the right key, and they'd start singing. And it was absolutely beautiful. They sang um, a rendition of Shenandoah, and they came around and sort of surrounded us into the aisles and sang it. It brought tears to my eyes. It was so beautiful. It was so beautiful. Yeah, uh, it's interesting that you talk about how hot it was because, Maria, do you remember, just like everywhere else we went, uh, we're listening to this incredible internationally famous choir, and, of course, we're drinking <laughs> the <Sweet>. mojito <laughs> that uh, you get when you, when you go anywhere. Did, did you get no. me? Oh, my gosh. No. Yeah, we no. did. Yeah. It seemed a little strange to be in this... Um, auditorium and we weren't able to take pictures there obviously that would have been distracting I think um, but we're able to hang on to our, our obligatory uh, mojito <laughs> which I got quite a taste for while I was there. Um, of course ours was right after lunch so maybe they thought uh, we, had oh, we, we went before, be lunch. before lunch didn't mm -hmm. we yes mm -hmm. it was lovely and one of the questions that I had when we were watching the, the choir was how on earth can all these people um, you know, have taken off work to come and do an hour long or whatever the performance was that, that we enjoyed. But that was actually their job, That's wasn't their job. it? That is their job. And they travel around the world mm -hmm. um, and doing, doing that. Um, which reminds me, um, we know that not only have travel restrictions um, eased for Americans to go to Cuba, but they've also eased for some Cubans to travel. And I think that was surprising for me. And Maria, do you remember when we went to Remedios and uh, we went to um, a church that's being renovated and we met the town historian and we met the artist that is renovating the church. And he had actually traveled um, quite extensively outside Cuba. And, um, and has been invited to do residencies in other places. I can't remember his name, unfortunately. Um, do you remember um, the work that he did, that gold altar screen, that whole wall that was covered? Was that, it was gold leaf, yes. wasn't it? Yes, yes. And then they had restored some of the side pieces and they were still, it was still under construction, but you could walk around and see the different things from the different periods of history okay. in that church. Awesome. And, um, and um, we also um, learned at the Literacy Museum that um, the system of reading that has been developed in Cuba is worldwide. In fact, the only place that it is not being taught is in America. And that the experts who've developed the programs um, are, are well-traveled people that they, they are used as resources all over the world. So I think that kind of um, blows a stereotype. Uh, many people that we've talked to since coming back think that Cubans aren't allowed to travel, and they are if they're sharing their expertise with, with other people. Um, uh, who else did we meet? We met so many people and did so many things. It's sometimes hard to remember what we did. Anne, I know that you had a slightly different um, experience when we went to the Museum of Fine Art and yes. that you made a, a very personal connection. Can you tell us about that? We didn't have that same opportunity uh, to meet somebody. We met a very lively and wonderful guide <laughs> that um, took us through the museum, proudly showing off modern history, which isn't quite as, it went from a time farther back than just really contemporary, but very happy to show us. And because we had had a Cuban artist um, at the John Michael Kohler Arts Center uh, a few years ago, who had a big exhibition there, I asked him if he knew about this artist. 
and perhaps I didn't pronounce his name in a, in a Cuban accent, but he wasn't quite sure what I was talking about. So I told him I'd send him uh, the, the newsletter and the write-up, the curatorial notes. Sent it to him along with when, who took it for me. And um, he was excited about that. He's, also, his favorite singer was Deanne Warwick. So um, I sent him a CD of Deanne Warwick. That was a little tricky to find one of those around in the stores really? anymore. Uh, but sent it to him, and he was thrilled. And he did know about the artist. Then it came back, and he had had an exhibit there also in 2009. And so we were chatting about that, and, and that, so that was that personal connection where you could talk about artists that we both knew um, and the representational things, things that don't necessarily reflect real positively uh, on a government where they're finding exception to the government. And in his work, this artist was showing some of the problems. His mother is still mm -hmm. in Cuba. He's in Florida. Uh, they're talking on the phone, and, and yes, it's raining here, too, because it's only 90 miles apart. Um, mm. So it was really interesting, and hopefully, um, with some of the easing of the restrictions, and if there is enough money to do it, he'd like to come and visit the United States. Not to live here, but he would like to see some of our art museums also. Right, and you are in contact We're with him? We're emailing mm -hmm. now. Back right. and forth now. Right. And Maria, you are in contact with yes. our guide. Leanne, yes, and she was quite thrilled to hear from us that we're still all abuzz about Cuba and putting the word out there for other people to travel. And do you imagine that we will see her one day? I'm hoping so, in one way or yes, I think so. We can see to that. And did you get the impression when we were there that um, her goal is to travel? I know she wants to go to Spain, which oh. is where her family originated from, and she wants to go to France. Um, but did you get the impression that she wants to reside anywhere else other than Cuba? No, I don't. She is very Cuban at heart, and I think she always will be. She wants to explore the world, just like most of us do. But no. Definitely not. I think Cuba is her home. And she also very Fe much wanted to take advantage of the uh, Cuban educational system. Oh, for sure, for yeah. sure. And um, because she knows so many languages, I think that's why she, I'm not sure if she had gone to France to study or if she had that availability. But uh, I'm thinking she will go there to enhance her understanding. I think that's one of the wonderful things <laughs> with the guides. They were very personable with us. Mm -hmm. They answered questions as honestly as they could um, and uh, just made it very much known that they were very proud of their country and mm -hmm. let us know what the history was and um, dealt with anything from economics, the money system, um, the ration system, all of those things that we had heard about, but to hear it from someone that's experiencing it, that's living it. Our guide was the um, basically bit breadwinner for her family that consisted of her grandmother, her parents, mm -hmm. herself, and her daughter. Although her, her grandparents, her grandmother and her parents are now pensioners, but it's, that wouldn't be sufficient. But it was um, really nice to hear about their personal experience living in Cuba. Maria, you and I have talked a little bit about that. Maria and I don't have American passports, so in, in fact, we would be able to go to Cuba um, uh, from our, either the countries where we have our passports from or through Canada or Mexico. But um, would you refer to what you and I have sometimes talked about, um, the fact that we were happy to be on this trip because of the fact that like Anne said, we got the personal stories and we got the lessons, as it were, from our guide, rather than going as an individual traveler. Oh, definitely. I think this was one of the better ways to go through um, Premier, um, through the Chamber Exploration Group, um, because there's just so much to see, and I don't know um, if it would be possible to 
get to see all these things, especially in a short period of time, because um, and to interact with the people, to experience the different foods and the restaurants, and just see all the um, UNESCO the UNESCO sites and the fact that Havana is a heritage world site, that um, so many of the um, city squares are areas of importance have been restored like the churches and and now they're restoring um, along the Melicon, one of the main highways that runs along the Caribbean. Um, those old colonial buildings are four or five hundred years old and they're restoring them to their splendor that they once were. And same with the palace. I just I can't just, imagine. How, I, I can imagine uh, finding my way around Havana and certainly reading it up ahead of time, knowing what to see. But um, it was such an intense experience uh, from morning. Of course, for me, I would never have got up as early as we did. <laughs> so I would have missed out half of the trip, probably. But uh, at the, I don't know about your guide, Anne, but um, one of the things we noticed is that Leanne was well known. She knew people wherever we went. And so we had these immediate connections with people. Let's talk about, um, I know it was one of your favorite places. It was certainly one of mine. And that was when we went to, um, is it Del Mar, where uh, the street ceramic art is? Did we go through Del Mar? Oh, during, then, yes, during the mar in the marketplace. Is that what you said? No, um, Fuster. Fuster. Yeah. Oh, yes. Uh, Fuster is a Cuban artist who is an environmental artist. He has, he's a ceramicist, uh, a painter, and uses recycled as well as tiles that he fires there, also paintings. Um, he is well known. He has exhibited in the Twin Cities. He has paintings and ceramics on exhibit in New York City. Um, we were invited to his home, his gallery, uh, at wander around the courts. And he hasn't limited his art to himself. Mm -hmm. which is a wonderful thing. It's like this small, narrow street, uh, residential street, but all the neighbors have pitched in, and they take all the tiles, and so all the, um, it's a ceramic tiled fence line almost, mm -hmm. uh, with the, down the whole street, everybody's gates are all decorated, so it all matches, and then you walk into this, and it's just, whew, this whole uh, environment filled with color and tile. And... Maria, it's hard to um, describe what that neighborhood looked like other than the art. Um, some of our group would say it was poverty stricken. Some would say it was very simplistic and some would say um, that it was crumbling. Um, but it's not what you expect when, when you first, it's just pure joy to see it this is. art coming out of, of nowhere kind of thing. And I think whether you say poverty or it's what is your standard? Yes, is it the U.S. Yeah. standard? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's like saying when we went, they showed us both the regular grocery store that you would use your Cuban pesos mm -hmm. in and your other grocery store that you would use your coops in that was a bit bigger and fancier. It was air conditioned, uh, but it was small. It was very small. It is nowhere near our big supermarkets. But that's normal right. for them. Um, and to, so to criticize and say this is just pop, it's what, you're, what are you accepting? Mm -hmm. Are you content with this? Or do you have to have all these other things? And they're much more content with a whole lot less than See, we are here in the United States. I think Maria and mm -hmm. I came back with the same very impression. Much, very much. Now, they're very resourceful. Yes. Now, I know, um, I don't think your group got the opportunity to do this, but um, we were very fortunate. My husband would say it was the highlight of his trip. Um, on the last evening that we were there, we got to go to the Buena Vista Social Club, and we got to uh, actually meet the um, elderly Cuban musicians. Uh, Maria, can you talk a little bit about that, what that was like? We kind of let loose that night. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was just, I don't know, I've never been to one of those before, so well, I'm not sure. What were you expecting? I think I was expecting a theater. 
because it, we were going to see a music group and it, what did it look like? It was more like... Just a... I don't want to call it a bar, just a... a cafe. Cafe, I guess, as they would call it there. I mean, my gosh, they're just... We were probably all tourists in there and everybody just... But Louis, as you say, the singing was just was really phenomenal. They just went on and on, and everybody gets up and belted. And who is that one lady there, that big blonde lady? She reminded me of Coochie Coochie. And she was 85 years old. And, uh, and They just went on. And I wish that I'd known a little bit more about the history of the musicians because yeah. people were standing up having their photographs taken with them and they just wanted to touch them and um, and we got to meet them and shake their hands and dance. Yeah. And, and then again at the end too, as you say, everybody has to get up and do the final dance, so to speak. You go and you zigzag through around the tables and you just have a good time. It's and that just, was, they're just so musically inclined. They're just so exuberant. It just flows out of them versus we try to do those dances and it just doesn't come as easily. I'm not sure if it's an everyday occurrence, but oh. every place that we went for lunch or for <laughs> sure. dinner, there were musicians. Of course, they all had their CDs to tell, sell us, but mm -hmm. um, it was wonderful just to experience the kind of music. And I kept waiting for something that was going to be a little bit more Cuban. And every once in a while, we'd hear it. But they, they were playing for the audience, so they played tunes that they thought Americans would like. Right. And, and, and there's a huge African yes, influence yes, also. Yes. Um, and, and I think that points to the fact that when we went to see the children, we were actually going to um, like a, a cultural center that children mm -hmm. go to when they're not in regular school. That's right. And that's one of the things we learned is that um, because of their culture and because of their political system, they, they, everybody has access to the arts. And I joke about the fact that um, I'm not a very musical person but that we came back and every morning when you get up in the morning, you, you kind of singing and dancing your way into the elevator because it becomes such a part of you, doesn't mm -hmm. it, when you're there, mm -hmm. the whole music thing. So, Well, again, time has gone extremely quickly, and uh, I thank you very much for coming on the trip and for being my guest today, and uh, we look forward to seeing the viewers next time. Thanks a lot. Thank you.